Today we are diving into a true legend from the golden age of shortwave and amateur radio. The Drake SPR4 communications receiver. What you are watching is a live tuning session through the 40 meter amateur band right around 7 MHz where the band is full of life this evening. Operators are checking in, reg chewing and running nets and this provides the perfect backdrop to explore the performance and character of the SPR4. Let's start with a bit of context. The SPR4 was released in 1969 by the RL Drake Company, a name that by then had already earned its place in amateur radio history. This receiver was special because it was fully solid state a significant step away from the vacuum tube based receivers that had dominated the 1950s and early 60s. Drake had already built a reputation for building high performance, compact and user friendly gear and the SPR4 carried that torch into the solid state era. While it shared a similar chassis and dial with the R4 series, the SPR4 was aimed at serious shortwave listeners and SWL hobbyists, offering wide general coverage and simplified controls without sacrificing performance. Now, while I'm tuning here on the 40 meter band, let's talk about how this radio works and why it's so respected. The SPR4 is a dual conversion super heterodyne receiver. Its design routes incoming signals through a two-stage conversion process. The first intermediate frequency is 5645 kilohertz and the second is 50 kilohertz. This gives it very high image rejection which is especially important when you are tuning crowded or noisy bands just like this one. What you are hearing right now is a collection of amateur QSOs in LSP mode. The voices are crisp, the background noise is low and even closely spaced signals are cleanly separated. That's thanks to the selectivity filters in this receiver. A key part of what makes the SPR4 sound so good. It came standard with three selectable filters, white 4.8 kHz for AM or general listening, medium 2.4 kHz for standard SSB and narrow 0.4 kHz for CW and extremely tight signal work. These filters are two mechanical filters, not audio DSP, so you get a distinctive analog sharpness and warmth but without the mushy sideband noise that lesser radios sometimes let in. Now take note of the manual RF gain control, the pre-selector and the band pass tuning knob. These aren't just filler controls. The pre-selector lets you finally tune the front end input stage, maximizing gain exactly where you want it and keeping out of band signals suppressed. When tuned correctly, it noticeably improves both sensitivity and selectivity. This particular SPR4 I'm using today has a full crystal bank installed, giving me access to multiple 500 kHz tuning segments across the HF spectrum. Unlike many general coverage receivers of the time that relied on band spread dials or analog interpolations, the SPR4 uses plug-in crystals for rock solid frequency control and Drake took it a step further by offering the FS4 synthesizer as an upgrade, effectively turning the SPR4 into a continuous coverage receiver by replacing the need for individual crystals. It's rare, but if you find one, it transforms the SPR4 into an even more flexible powerhouse. Now, while I continue tuning through the lower portion of 40 meters, Listen to how the radio handles adjacent channel signals. You'll notice very little splatter. That's the filter skirts doing their job, combined with good front end overload resistance. The SPR4 doesn't suffer from face noise or the jittery instability of modern radios. 
it has analog smoothness and when it locks on the signal it stays there. One of my favorite aspects is the audio quality. It's rich, full and comfortable for extended listening. The audio output stage is transformer coupled and designed to drive both headphones and external speakers without distortion whether you're using the internal side mounted speaker or a matching ms4 external speaker the sound is natural and fatigue free let's also talk about stability the spr4 was engineered for low drift something often overlooked in its day even without modern temperature compensation or PLL synthesis, this receiver holds frequency to within about plus or minus 100 Hz over long operating periods. And unlike older tube sets, you don't have to worry about warm up drift. This radio is ready as soon as you power it on. Now listen to this contact here. Two operators deep in conversation. Despite nearby signals, fading conditions and static crashes, the SPR4 delivers clear audio with minimal tuning fuss. This isn't just nostalgia, it's real dependable engineering at work. And although it's over 50 years old, this receiver still rivals and sometimes surpasses more modern gear in terms of signal copyability especially when you are relying on ears and filters rather than fancy digital displays. You will also notice that tuning on this set is very precise. Even though it's analog, the main dial resolution is excellent and frequency alignment across the crystal controlled segments is surprisingly accurate. Each division is about 1 kHz, making it easy to zero in on voices or CW tones. A few other features worth noting. The notch filter is very effective at knocking down heterodyne tones. The BFO makes S, SP and CW listening seamless and the S meter is smooth and well calibrated. A rare thing for radios of this vintage. All of this adds up to a receiver that still holds up in practical use and on nights like this with a busy 40 meter band full of rag juice and activity the drake spr4 shows why it earned its place in ham radio history whether you are using it for nostalgia collecting or actual dxing the spr4 continues to prove itself as one of the most capable and enjoyable receivers ever built I hope this demonstration gave you a sense of what this classic receiver can do. If you enjoy this kind of content, real hardware, honest listening and practical tests, be sure to subscribe to Spacetime Engineering for more deep dives into vintage gear, live reception tests and hands-on restoration insights. Until next time, keep listening, stay curious and enjoy the magic of HF Radio. This is Space Time Engineering signing off.